Hey, what's up, Eastside? What's up? What's up? As y'all see, uh, today I'm in my house. Uh, just like you all. So today, instead of being in the church, we decided that we was going to go ahead and do a little quarantine worship with you all, right? We want to worship quarantine style right in the comfort of our own homes. And I actually brought a few of the Levites with me, right? So we're going to do this thing together, y'all. Rashida, say what's up to the people. What's up, everybody? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, okay, okay. Big sis, Luanda, say what's up. Good morning, everybody. Quarantine worship is real. Let's worship. All right, all right, all right. And I brought one of the power couples with me, uh, Brother West and Minister West. Y'all say what's up. Hey, hey the West, West is in the, in the house. house. Yeah, we here. Just having a good time. We're going to worship and have a ball today. It is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. And have glad a, glad it is. Day. Yeah, and of course, you know. I mean, I'm in my house, right? So I couldn't forget my my, my wife, my boo, my love, right? AD, shout a shout a holler to the people. Hi, everybody. Dayron, say what's up to the people. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, DJ, say what's up, man. All right, y'all. Look, man, y'all get ready for this worship experience, man. This this, well, hey, we've already been worshiping quarantine style, right? So look, man, we're going to do this thing together on today, man. Let's have some fun in the Lord. Let's go. Come on, praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's give him our best praise. And what's the highest praise? It is hallelujah. Come on, lift it up right now. He's so worthy of all of the glory and all our worship.
have such a great friend in God. The greatest friend of all. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Y'all check this out.
friendship, family, friends, and guests. What a wonderful day to worship the Lord. I want to make sure that we are all joined in the privilege of worship today. So I'm going to check on a couple of my gold friends. These are a couple of my sisters from East Friendship Baptist Church Small Group Gold Friends. We've been coming together for quite a time, loving God, setting and completing our goals, growing and glowing. Crystal Kivette, are you joining us this morning? Latasha, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. Latasha and Crystal, I'm here. Good morning, everyone. I'm excited to worship with you all today. We are so glad you are joining us for an amazing time of prayer, worship, and God's Word. As they say, there's literally a church on every corner. But since we are in this virtual space, I'll say there's a church at every click. If you're a member of East Friendship, we welcome you to our worship experience. And if you are worshiping with us for the first time, we welcome you too and hope that it won't be your last. Now, you may be home in your PJs relaxing, drinking your cup of coffee, but we encourage you to don't just watch, but participate in worship. Hey, do me a favor, share this service with 10 people. Tell them to join your East Friendship family for worship today. Let them know that they won't be the same. Hit the share button, start a watch party. Bring your family around the TV so they can worship him in spirit and in truth. One last thing, stand to your feet, clap your hands, pray out loud, and sing, sing, sing. Now, get ready to be blessed. Our goal here at East Friendship is to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose, and make a difference. East, East Friendship, let's go church. church. Praise the Lord, everybody, and let us exalt his name together. At East Friendship, we invite you to our community to get to know God, find freedom, and discover your purpose, and make a difference. Here are ways you can continue to grow with us in this season and get connected to the East Friendship family. Advent is a special time of year that sometimes gets lost in the bright lights of the Christmas season. Today is the first day of Advent, which begins a four-week period of preparation in anticipation of the Nativity of Jesus at Christmas. The Advent season is all about reflecting on how we can prepare our hearts and homes for Christ's birth in the world. It is a time for the faith communities and families to remember through prayer, reflections, special music, and good deeds what the true meaning of Jesus' birth really is. The first candle of Advent signifies hope. Hope which assures us that God will fulfill the prophecies declared in the Old Testament about Jesus. Hope does not disappoint us. It's Christmas time and what a time to give to those in need, especially the children in our community. You can help by dropping off a new unwrapped gift on the next three Saturdays, November 28th, December 5th, and December 12th from 1 to 3 p.m. at East Friendships Annex, 223 44th Street, Northeast, Washington, D.C. If you need more information, you can reach us at serve at efbchurch.org. Your contribution will put a smile on someone's face. Now is a time where you can do your part in building your church and Christ's kingdom. Join us in giving via text to give Givelify, Realm, or Classic Mail so that our church can continue to make a difference in the lives of our ever-growing community. East Friendship is intentional about stewarding our resources and raising up a generation of people who want to touch the heart of God through their giving. Let us now pray and ask God's blessings over these tithes and offerings. Father, we thank you for blessing and keeping our church during this pandemic. We ask that you touch the lives of every giver, every home, and every family. There are those who don't have to give or are unemployed. We ask that you open new opportunities for them. Multiply and increase these gifts that we may do your work in the community and in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let us continue to worship and right now, you can invite others to join us by clicking share right at the bottom of your screen. Help us spread the good news that God is still speaking and doing miracles around the world and right here at East Friendship.
Praise the Lord, saints of God. I'm just so glad that the music ministry reminded us that our God is a miracle worker. I'm so glad he's a miracle worker because he's performing miracles every day in all of our lives. Why don't you grab your Bibles and open them to the second book of the Bible, which is Exodus chapter 14, verse 5 and 10. Uh, today we're going to conclude this Kingdom Agenda series. It's so good to be here on this fifth Sunday, and I'm glad that you brought your family and friends, brothers and sisters, saints of the Most High God, to this virtual worship experience. Open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 14. We're going to look at verse 5 through 10, and I have a King James Bible, and my Bible reads thusly, and it was told the king of Egypt that the people fled and the heart of Pharaoh and of his servants were turned against the people. And they said, why have we done this? That we have let Israel go from serving us. And he made ready his chariot and took his people with him. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all the chariots of Egypt and captains over every one of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel went out with him with a high hand. But the Egyptians pursued after them, all the horses and the chariots of Pharaoh and his horsemen and his army, and overtook them by the sea beside Pyahirath before Baal and when Pharaoh drew nigh, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them. And they were sore afraid, and the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Blessed be the name of our God. If you're standing, you may be seated in the presence of God. My last offering in this kingdom agenda, I want to tag this text. Be watchful, be watchful of a sore loser with power. Be watchful of a sore loser with power. And you can say with too much power. Pray with me and stay with me. Father, bless even right now. Stand in my body and my mind. Use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Be watchful of a sore loser with power. The British novelist, Charles Kingsley rightly said, there are two freedoms, the false, where man is free to do what he likes, and the true, where man is free to do what he ought. Throughout their history, the nation of Israel struggled with both of these freedoms, just as God's people struggle with them today just as the United States is struggling with them now. It is a mark of maturity when we learn that freedom is a tool to build with and not to play with. It's a tool to build with, not to toy with. And that freedom involves responsibility. Israel Exodus experience housed in today's text taught them that their future success lay in fulfilling three responsibilities. One, following the Lord. Two, trusting the Lord. And three, praising the Lord. Yet they would have to face a Pharaoh, a Pharaoh who's mentally challenged, narcissistic, and highly addicted to power. You, you all know the story very well. After four years, oh, excuse me, after 400 years of bondage, 400 years of beating, oppression, and hum humiliation, God decided it was time to bring this slavery to its end. God had visited the children of Israel, heard their cry, saw their affliction, and remembered his covenant 
and then sent Moses to stand before Pharaoh to speak truth to power and to declare, let my people go. Or should I say, let the votes go. Uh, Moses, with Aaron by his side, with a stick and a stutter, stood flat-footed and put the power of God on display with a strong, outstretched hand. He redeemed God's people. Uh, you, you remember how God, um, bam, 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 unleashed 10 uh, blows or 10 plagues upon uh, Egypt. Uh, to, to who they submitted to break their stronghold they had on God's people. I'm trying to tell you, if you don't know, God will raise up leaders who are willing to get in the fight and give him a sidekick with some pumps, a purse, and some HBCU power. Do I have a witness? God will fight your battles. God will take on your enemies. God will fight you for, for your freedom. God does not want you nor I to stay uh, in bondage, darkness, despair, or desperation. Uh, so we see here in Exodus chapter 14 uh, that it's been a week now since Moses and God's people had left Pharaoh at Ramses. They stood in Sakoth of Etham and now were instructed to encamp southward near Piahirath. Uh, near the watchtower and the fortress that was used to defend Egypt from Asia called Migdal. Here they were between Piahirath, a range of craggy, impassable rocks, and Migdal, a fortress near Balsiphon. Pharaoh's 600 chosen chariots behind them and a sea in front of them. They were stuck, yes, between a rock and a hard place. This is where we are today. Our nation is stuck between November 3rd and January 20th, 2021, between election day and inauguration day, between Trump's end and Biden's new day, between freedom and deliverance, between hope and joy versus fear and judgment, between valuing democratic institutions and serving a dicta dictator, between good intentions versus evil doers, between a decent empathetic man and a self-centered egomaniac, between a new day and an old regime going back to the old ways, between democracy and an oligarchy, between progressiveness and evangelicals, between Democrats and Republicans, between tipping points and boiling points, between voting machines and mail-in ballots, uh, between truth-telling and lying, between reality and denial, between maturity and tantrum-throwing childishness, between a regal winner and an outright sore loser, Yes, I said it again, a sore loser. You see, in the text, Pharaoh did not ever expect to lose, and when it was over, uh, it happened so fast, he couldn't even believe it. He thought no one could bring him to his knees, especially, listen now, a stuttering shepherd who once was part of the leadership of the nation. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what Biden is. Uh, you don't know that he stutters a little bit. Uh, he has a history of stuttering, uh, and he was part of the leadership. Uh, and so uh, Pharaoh could not comprehend it, and, and he, he began to slowly realize the scope and breadth of all that had really happened, and he got angry. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can I just stop a few minutes and interject some, some uh, principles or embed some principles in your spirit and tell you a little bit about sore losers? Because mm -hmm. former uh, life hacker Ritten Allen once explained how to avoid being a sore loser in a competitive game. Uh, it's useful advice for any uh, one older than a toddler, but it might also be worth revisiting in order to apply his lessons to a higher stakes context. Say uh, an election or so? Yeah, elections, yeah. Uh, one of the things that he can said, said to do so you can avoid being a sore loser is cons congratulate the winner right away. A simple hair and shake, a well done, completely shifts the spotlight from them, says Alan. And, and that way, if you need to sulk, you can go do it on your own without drawing unwanted attention. You may recall when John McCain lost the 2008 presidential election to Barack Obama, uh, he not only congratulated the winner with a private phone call, but he gave a speech, mm -mm, a speech that sought to rally his own supporters to the greater cause. 
the greater cause, which was the success and well-being of all Americans, not just those who vote for one party or the other. Uh, he did so in such an eloquent speech. Uh, but he also suggests maybe you should remove yourself from the situation if it's too much for you. Uh, I hope somebody named 45 is listening. Saying nothing is always better than saying something or doing something you will regret later on that will taint your legacy. Or oh, thirdly, maybe practice being a graceful winner, because being a graceful winner can help you to avoid being a sore loser, says Alan. If you can avoid gloating or trash talking, which you never did for four years uh, when you happen to be victorious, the people you play against will probably return the same respect. And they have in spite of 45. Do I have a witness? So Pharaoh, I chose this text because Pharaoh helps us to understand sore losers and why it's important. Here it is to be watchful of a sore loser with too much power. Because here's my point. I want to tell you, be watchful of a sore loser with power because they will, one, use their power to rally a crowd on their side to intimidate. Two, they ride a wave of appalling behavior. And three, they will resist the law, the results, and thus fight God. Uh, can I give them to you one more time? Here, here they are. Uh, be watchful of a sore loser with too much power because they will use their power to, one, rally a, cry, a crowd on their side to intimidate and sometimes even intimidate those who are close to them. Two, ride a wave of appalling behavior. And finally, resist the law, the results, thus fight God. You see, uh, be watchful of a sore loser with power because they'll rally or cry on their side to intimidating, to intimidate. Sore losers with too much power, especially ones who know they lost but refuse to accept it, is dangerous. You see, people around them, uh, even around Pharaoh, are afraid to tell them the truth. Uh, because they, they, they get psychotic and crazy and uh, blinded by uh, the, the failure in their own mind. And people around them are threatened by their power. And so if you read chapter 14 closely, you would know after 10 surgical blows up Pharaoh's head, it was already over. After bloody water, invasion of frogs, lice and gnats, wild animals with flies, pestilence of livestock, boils in the skin, thunderstorms of hail and fire, locusts of darkness for three days, and then it was that final blow, the death blow for the firstborn of Egypt. Every family and even the firstborn livestock died. It was over. Gone. Kaput. Uh, he knew it, but he couldn't accept it. He couldn't see, he, he can see the results and measure the clear loss, <laughs> but he weighed the, alternative, the alternatives and lost his mind. Not only he lost his mind, he lost himself. So it was with Trump. There were 10 surgical blows. Number one, Biden wins over the Democratic field and he was the greatest threat to Trump. Number two, raise more money than past contenders exceeding Trump. Number three, models wearing masks and stays out of the firing line by campaigning from home. Number four, COVID-19 comes and is mismanaged by Trump. Number five, economic woes hits everybody and Lottie Dottie. Uh, number six, debate stage is turned into a truancy hearing. <laughs> number seven, Biden chooses a woman of African, Jamaican, and Indian, uh, Indian descent named Kamala. Number eight, home court advantage, Scranton, Pennsylvania roots. Come on, Pennsylvania. Number nine, Obama, Obama, Obama. And number 10, the African angels came from the north, the south, and east and west. Yes, Paula White, Abrams, Keisha Lance Bottoms, Abby Phillips, Michelle Obama, keep naming them if you will, but they came from all kinds of places. African, fine African uh, angels came. Mm. You see, if you look at this text, I'm trying to show you uh, how he was rallying people to his side. The text says in verse 6, he readied his chariot and took his people with him. Then verse 7 says, he took 600 chosen chariots in all chariots of Egypt. Uh, all you ministers and preachers, you got to know how to exegete the text and then give a hermeneutical leap to it so it can be applied uh, to present day situations. Look at the inference of the text. It's clear. He said he is going after somebody. Uh, he's readied his chariot 
and he took his people. He's going after somebody. He has a hit list, and maybe you are on it. He's determined to change the results. He is now blinded by the loss and wants to turn the entire table over of the game and throw the pieces down the hall. Uh, he's putting a plan in motion, and he's taking folks with him, whether they want to come or not. See, too much power uh, is, 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 is intoxicating, uh, but it's also intimidating, and even people who know better don't do better. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to somebody right now. They, they, they have the clarity of what should be done, but they refuse to do it because they're intimidated by the power. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, he took folks with them, uh, whether they had COVID-19 or not. He don't care. Uh, he don't care what his wife says. He don't care what close friends says. Farrell was the same way. He don't care what anybody said. Uh, he cannot perceive himself as a loser, uh, but don't realize he's a sore one. Mm -hmm. Don't miss it. Uh, it said he, he, he took his people but he had 600 chosen chariots and then all the chariots of Egypt. The text implies that he also has some chosen people. He needs to come do some Pacific stuff for him. Yeah, he has some chosen chariots, uh, Reverend Dixon, that specializes in all the chariots of GOP with their leaders over each area, like justice, media. He had his State Department liar. He had his lying team. He had church and religious folks. Uh, come here, Lindsey Graham. <laughs> Come here, Paula White. Come here, radio host Alex Jones. Come here, Sean Hannity. Come here, Little Wayne and Kanye. Come here, Kushner and Little Don. Come here, uh, Kali. And come here, Stephen Miller, and bring Christopher with you. And come here, Rudy Tootie, with your crazy self. See, he brings a crowd of specialists to do specific tasks. He, he chosen chariots uh, to make sure they can execute what he needs done. Uh, 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 second, let me get to the second point. Uh, not, not only uh, uh, does he come down there bringing a crowd with him, but he rides the wave of appalling behavior. You see, the, the Pharaoh is a flip-flopper. He's kind of uh, schizophrenic. He don't know who he is one moment or another. Uh, he could not decide who he listens to because he had no consciousness. And if you study the history of the Exodus, he had many gods that he worshiped. And anytime you got many gods and many idols and many pagans, you got many spirits and you don't know the one spirit to listen to. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, and so verse five said, he reveals his double-mindedness in releasing God's people in one moment and then saying, did I do that for real? He, he releases them uh, to go to worship their God in one minute and then wondering why he released them in the next minute. He, he can't believe that they, they've been let go. Why have we done this, the text says, that we have let Israel go from serving us? See, if you understand the slave master uh, my, mindset, the, the master race uh, nationalist mindset uh, and their inclinations, they always believe we and others are there to serve their every whim. And they can't handle uh, when God comes in and breaks yokes uh, uh, off of slave masters, destroys their plots and plans, uh, no matter what they want to do, when they want to steal mailboxes and hire postmasters to manipulate the vote, what happened? You caused that. That's why millions of people came out, 100 million strong, and voted in advance. They take the mailboxes if you want. Come on, somebody. You want to make me shout right now. And you see, they belong to us. They, 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 we have power over them is their mentality, and so much so, we'll go and repossess them. And Pharaoh is acting like his vehicle got repossessed, and now he's going to go with some more vehicles and go get it back from the possessor. Oh, sometimes God hardens what already is in the heart of a leader to bring out the true character of the leader so all can see. God hardens the heart to reflect the appalling behavior that will never change. See, God knows Pharaoh will never change. And there's some people, no matter what they do and experience, no matter how people say God's with them, uh, they, they're never going to change. They're going to keep doing ugly. They're going to keep uh, criticizing and judging people, uh, making fun of them, calling them out of their name, continue to put women down, continue to, to do negative things, and they'll never change. So God shows you on a major platform like an election who they really are. I'm not sure 
Uh, it's, it, it, I'm not sure it's in hand of victory uh, when you look at the text because it says uh, after all that pain, appalling behavior, it was provoked because Israel had left with a high hand. I, I like that part of the text. Israel left with a high hand. I, I'm, I've been trying to find the, 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 the pneumatology, the spirit part of that, or try to understand uh, wh what that high hand means in the Hebrew. I'm not sure if the hand was a victory hand. Well, they just shouting all over D.C., Atlanta, New York, and it was a victory hand that got them upset. Or, or what is, was it, a partying and celebrating? And the more uh, Pharaoh heard uh, who, uh, who was partying, the more he got angry. Or was it the hand, uh, the high hand that had all the gold, the silver, the silk, and the spoils from Egypt? Was it the hands of praise that kept going up regarding their God? They kept lifting up God and just thanking God for getting them through. Well, whatever it was, it caused the Egyptians to pursue. Those high hands, and I'm trying to tell you, if you really know how to lift up your hands, demons will pursue you. If you're really unashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you know how to uh, raise up your hands and shabak God and told our God, your demons will pursue you. But, but don't worry about them. Just keep on praising him. Uh, let me just finish this sermon because I got to get out of here because uh, you, you heard these points clearly. Let me give you the third one because the text shows us that in order to deal with a sore loser, uh, he, he resists the Lord. The results thus fight God. See, see, Satan knows he's going to lose, and so does Pharaoh. In fact, I believe number 45 knew because he started preparing for this experience that was going to go on in the election months ahead. He started telling us how mail imbalance was not going to be good. He started telling us, see, uh, demons know some things too. They're not omniscient, but they're knowledgeable, and they do have some power. And so victory for all eternity really will belong to Jesus, uh, but he's already won. But here in the text, you see uh, that he's resisting uh, what God had already told him. He, uh, Pharaoh's resisting the ten plagues that came and, and destroyed all of e uh, Egypt. He's resisting uh, the, 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 the God of Moses who he know with a stutter and a stick brought him down. He's resisting the law and he can't handle the results. You can see it, but you can't handle it. Uh, you, can, you can see it right in front of your eyes, but you can't handle it. You know it played out right, but you can't handle it. And like a bitter child about to be punished, he gets whatever jab he can anyway. And that's what we got going on. Satan likes to go down swinging, and so does the pharaohs of the world. That's why faith is still a fight, even though we know who's going to win in the end. And so when suffering and sorrow make fear and desperation seem credible, uh, you got to know how to keep on fighting. Uh, the Bible says, if you look at Proverbs 14, verse 20 to 30, I won't read it all in the message version. It says, an unlucky loser is shunned by all, but everyone loves a winner. It's a criminal to ignore a neighbor in need, but compassion for the poor. What a blessing. It's, it's, uh, isn't it obvious that conspirators lose out while the thoughtful win love and trust? See, remember the end is near. Death will die. Satan will be bound. Christ has over overcome the world. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ, and God gives us the victory through Jesus. See, the battle of faith, listen now, isn't about winning because it's already been won. <laughs> Instead, it's about persisting. And so Moses and the people of God, despite Pharaoh uh, can't handling the results, uh, despite him resisting the law of God and the power of the law put on display from swallowing the serpent to ten plagues to part in the Red Sea, Pharaoh stood and can't, still couldn't handle the results. No matter the evidence that he's seen that God is involved did not prick his heart. And so there's no condemnation to those who believe. The battle of faith isn't about winning, it's about persisting. And so the text is helping us to understand because Moses comes and tells them to go forward. Uh, they get afraid and they see all the chariots coming and they're about to turn on the leader uh, and then Moses stood out with the, uh, with the staff and raised the staff and the Bible says uh, the water rose up and parted and they walked on, on dry ground uh, and that's what I'm trying to tell you uh, in this sermon. The believers rally cry is to keep on going forward. Uh, to keep going forward, though that sore loser thrashes and, 
and trash talks and threatens uh, that he isn't playing. We know he missed the whole point of the game anyway, but keep going forward. The Bible says, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Continue, continue doing the next thing, to play by God's rules, to live faithfully, to finish, to go to the finish line with your eyes on the prize, because uh, you're moving forward and keeping going is not in vain. You see, Satan and 45's uh, loser status is real. Who is that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And yet, with all that you have lost, God wants you to know still there is more to lose. Don't get hooked on being a loser or failing. That's all right because there's more to lose because the essence of the gospel, the good news in Jesus Christ is about loss. And an, uh, an authentic gospel begins with loss. It begins with dying. It begins with a cross. And if the gospel that you hear preached on the radio and the television or wherever does not begin with a cross, if it does not begin with telling you that something has to die, it's not the true gospel. The true gospel is not just about you coming uh, to Jesus as you are. It's about you being baptized in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It's about you losing your former life and gaining a new life in Christ. The season is about losing. It's about loss. But now, now right there, many of us have a problem. I hear you talking out there now. We have trouble coming to church and losing something. We came to get something. We came to get our blessing. We came to get our financial anointing. We came to get a relational and spiritual experience. But we came to get an encouraging word, some hope for tomorrow, some assurance that everything is going to be all right. Many of us came to get something or someone. We did not come to lose nothing. We have been taught to come to church seeking a blessing, praying to get and to never lose. We pray, Lord, give me a financial breakthrough. Uh, Lord, give me some peace of mind. Lord, give me a better husband. Lord, give me a well-behaved child. We come out to get and not lose. But after all who sets out on the journey to lose, that doesn't make sense. We have been told that in this world, it has, it's best to be a winner. It's best to get all that you can get and to do all that you can to hold on to what you have gotten. But no one wants to lose. But I serve a God uh, that took a loss for me. Uh, he, he, he took the pain of the cross for me. He took a loss of his hand use and let nails go in his hand. I serve a God who allowed nails to go in his feet, allowed the spears to go in in his side. He allowed mockers to laugh at him. He took a loss. Uh, he took humiliation on the cross uh, and he did not come down. Uh, I serve a God who knows what it is to take a loss for the team. Uh, I serve a God who knows on to it. So keep on believing. Uh, keep on praying. Keep on shouting. Keep on expecting. Keep on pursuing. Keep on serving. Keep on loving loving, keep on working, keep on sharing, keep on preaching, keep on studying. Don't worry about being a winner. Handle the loss and be mature enough in the spirit to keep on going despite what's going on. Keep on preaching because to live in Christ is to die is gain. Jesus said the greatest shall come the least. And if you want to become great in the kingdom, you will be a servant of God. Thank you you, Lord, for allowing me to go to a loss and still have my mind. Thank you, Lord, that you died on the cross, but you rose up with all power in your hand. Thank you, Lord, that you're coming back for your church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Thank you, Lord, that I'm not, I'm not a loser. I always win. In fact, I already win. I have the keys to the kingdom in my hand. Thank you, God, for the keys to the kingdom. Thank you, God, for the kingdom mandate. Thank you, God, for the kingdom agenda. Thank you, God, for choosing me and allowing me to lose me so I can have more of you, less of me, more of you, less of me, more of you. That's my greatest loss, and I still won in the end. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! We win. We are victorious. Father, thank you. 
for the victory, the miracle of changing my loss into a win. Less of me, more of you. Let me not be like the pharaohs and Herods and Nebuchadnezzars of the world, struggling and straining and pursuing power, trying to be big shot on the scene. God, you said a broken and contrite heart you love. Help us, Father, to have the humility and the spirit of a dignified king to handle a loss and hold our nation together. God, I pray that we watch and be careful of a sore loser that has too much power. That's how Hitler started. That's how Mussolini started. That's how many dictators started. And we refuse to allow this loser to have victory over democracy and over the kingdom of God. I pray, God, that we hear this word in the spirit and that we begin to pray for our nation, our communities, our families, our people. This is your servants asking you now. Be with us, Father. I pray someone hearing this message right now, God, you're tracking them down. They had some great loss in their life and they thought it was over. But you're the God of resurrection. You're the God of new beginnings. You're the God of the new day. Help them not to let the loss swallow them up. Help them to know that even in the loss, you are there working for the good of your people. I love you, God, because you are patient, God. What appears to be things and what we see in man eyes in the natural, you are doing something even greater in the spirit. Father, I pray for every soul, every man, woman, and child that's listening to this that needs to ask that critical question. Am I prepared to meet this God who brings victory in advance for his people on a cross, who brought victory through the cross and displayed it through the resurrection and now gives it through the Holy Spirit? I pray there's a yes behind that in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Beloved, we're just so glad that you came and fellowshiped with us in this virtual experience. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we want to invite you to Christ now. We want you to know there's no guilt, no shame where you are in your life, that God loves you and God wants to minister to you. He wants to let you know that victory is already at your door, that Christ already did the work for you. You just got to plug in with him. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that he died for your sins, rose on the third day with all power in his hands, sitting at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for you. Will you come even now on this day? This fifth Sunday could be your birthday unlike any birthday. We can sing celebration if you just come give your life to Christ even now. Because here at East Friendship, our charge is to help you to know God to find freedom, help you to discover your purpose and make a difference with your life. But you must give your life to him so he can work with you and for you. This is the Christ who took a loss for you so that you can be a winner in all your life. Come give your life to him. This is the word for the day. But don't allow a loser to have so much power over your life Because there's a king of kings and a lord of lords that have given you the victory and you never can be taken out of his hand. Oh, we bless you today. It's getting time to go. I see some people, come on. You're saying something right there in the chat box. Give us your name, let us know it. Come on, come on. You come to Christ even right now. We're patient. We want you to come. Come on, give your life to him. Just let us know right there virtually. I, I've accepted Christ. Let us know right there in the time sh- timeline. We're going to reach out to you. You can always reach out to us. You can send us a direct note to Kingdom Tracks at EFB Church, spell out church.org. Let us know what you have experienced through this word, and we'll put you on a discipleship track to bring a better life for you and your family. Oh, beloved, it's time to go. 
I'm so glad, and I will be watchful of a sore loser with too much power over these next coming weeks. Pray for our nation. Pray for our, our world. Pray for our Christ to come to minister to all of our lives. It's time to go. Just lifting up your hands. Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the opportunity to serve you. Now, God, do your perfect work in our life. We are determined to witness and to share and be a reflection of your kingdom agenda in this earth. Use us, glorify yourself in us and through us. Now unto him that's more than able to keep us from falling, this wonderful, loving, tender-hearted God that presents us faultless before all exceeding joy, this same God who sends us forth to be an act, act of grace and love in the earth that makes a difference in the world. In the matchless, marvelous name of Jesus, let everybody say amen. God be with you till we meet again. Ladies, wow, another amazing service. We worship, we sang, we prayed, and we gave. I pray that you were inspired and challenged by the word today. As a reminder, we will be online again at 3 p.m. on YouTube and Facebook. Our hope and prayer is that you will know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and make a difference. Family, please stay connected through our weekly Between Friends newsletter, Round, and social media. Continue to wear your mask, wash your hands, and watch your distance. See you next Sunday!